Hello YouTube, uh, my name is Joe and uh, I make maple syrup. Uh, and one of the things I use to make my maple syrup is I do run my sap through a reverse osmosis system. Uh, and so this video is basically the process that I take every year uh, assembling the reverse osmosis membrane. Uh, and so this is my process. Uh, it is, you know, it's a, a little bit of a lengthy process, uh, but I wanted to share it with you guys and then share some of the, uh, the pieces that I use and then some of the, uh, the visual aids that I use to help me remember how I do it. Uh, improvements this year, not too many improvements. Uh, I did buy new uh, RO membranes this year. Uh, and so I've got these from Membrane Solutions. It's an Amazon store, so uh, I will leave a link for those. But these are 150 gallon per day membranes. Um, and then I am getting rid of this housing. So I got another housing. Uh, this housing has an O-ring that's always a little hard to seat. And so I am going to just put this off to the side as a spare. Uh, and then uh, I will move onward and upward. Um, uh, housing, I'll also leave a link for that. Uh, there, there's So uh, one of the first visual aids that I do is I take a picture of my setup. <laughs> because I, I, I have hoses that I put together. And so at the end of each season, I take a picture of it so that I can kind of remember how to put it together. So uh, as we're building this, I will put that picture probably in one of the corners or just kind of glance it in periodically. Uh, the second thing that I do is because a lot of times these, all these housings probably came from different stores and different locations is I match them up. So that's number two, and that's the number two lid. Um, and so I, I try to make it easy because they'll start to screw together, but if they don't seat and you start throwing, you know, sap through there at 100 PSI, it's a squirting mess, okay? So those between the pitcher and this, uh, it really helps out a lot. So let's talk about the individual pieces of this process, okay? So the first item that I have is, I do not own an RO bucket, uh, but after seeing the RO bucket and seeing that, oh, I can house everything inside of a five gallon pail, uh, I was sold on the idea. So uh, this is my Home Depot bucket. You can see that it's a Aquatec 8800 in there. I mounted that to the outside, bolted it in there, and then I ran that through, uh, siliconed it. The bottom of the bucket has a couple holes in it. I don't know if those will show up, but it has a couple holes in it. Actually, they're on the sides, excuse me. Got holes in there so that if anything leaked, uh, this bucket would not fill up with sap. Uh, you'll also see that there's a piece of drain tile and that is to house my pre-filter. Uh, pre-filter is something that you'll change quite often. And so a pre-filter is something you change quite often. And so we want to be able to easily access that. Uh, this is my 10 inch filter. This is just a five micron filter that I just get at the big box store. Uh, and you'll go through one of these for every about gallon and a half of finished syrup. Um, so figure out what your sugar content is, what have you. Uh, and if you go two gallons, I think it's okay. A lot of it depends on how dirty the sap is that you're putting in. So that's there. Uh, I also, after I clean and dry everything, I just store that O-ring right inside there. Uh, and then you got your cap, right? Um, these are the RO membranes. Uh, this is my new one. And also something that I do is I just write right on there that that's my RO water. So that's the water that I put off to the side. And then that is my sap side there. Uh, when you're assembling these, the RO water 
needs to go through a check valve, okay? Uh, and, and so that is something that we need to uh, make sure we get this check valve on the right side. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the fact that your sap side, you're going to put back pressure on it. And so you wanna make sure that um, that's not going back and through and you're not losing your sap. Um, so we got our housings. Um, these are your membranes. Uh, they should be sealed when you get them. Uh, if they're used from year to year, we want to make sure that they are staying, um, they're staying moist. Uh, they're staying a little wet. Some people will wrap these up inside saran wrap. I have stored these inside of uh, RO water uh, and, and they work pretty well. Um, but we will put these inside the housings today. Uh, moving on down the line. You will see that this is just the holder that I have built uh, and this will end up getting screwed through the sidewall of that bucket. Uh, and this kind of, I will fit this in there. Oh, maybe it fits in there. There we go. Uh, and then that will hug on there. And so I will do a lot of my hose work assembly uh, prior to putting it into the bucket. Um, and then these are my, my sub assemblies. And if you're building this for the first time, uh, I have been able to do a little bit of color coding. These are my, my hose sub assemblies and I have been able to do a little bit of color coding which helps me out, uh, but it's not necessary. Uh, and so you can buy these hoses and all these quick links. Um, just buy them through the Amazon. It seems to work out pretty good. Uh, all of my hoses are going to be quarter inch. Um, the last thing that I have here, well, besides the wrench, and the wrench is, a, is real necessary when you're trying to take things apart. Not so much when you're putting them together, but when you're taking them apart for sure. Uh, and then what you see here is this is uh, the valve that I have. Uh, and if I could find the link for this, I will definitely leave that as well. Um, and, and that is what you will adjust to create the back pressure of your sap going back in. Now, before we get going too far, uh, I want to make sure that I make it clear that I run my reverse osmosis system in parallel. Uh, I, I do realize that if I run it through series, that it would make the sap higher concentrated faster. Yes, I realize that, but the way that I run my system is I run it through what's called a batch system. So uh, I'll have a 30 gallon barrel of sap with a brass spigot on the bottom and I run my sap through and back into that barrel and I work at a batch at a time. And usually it'll take about six to seven hours to bring that 30 gallons uh, up to, you know, anywhere from six to 7% sugar content for that barrel. And then I do a flush and then I will do the second barrel. Uh, now, if I had a large vat, 100 gallons of sap, then it would make sense to go through a series where I would run it through one membrane, the next membrane, the last membrane, and then it would be at a finished stage when it exited. Uh, but uh, I don't. Uh, I find that by running it through parallel, uh, it works out better for me, and my membranes will not get clogged as quickly. Uh, your membranes will get clogged, but in parallel, if one got clogged, the other two are not getting clogged. So uh, let's start the assembly process. Now, one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm going to submerge these into the water uh, just to kind of evacuate as much water as I can out of the system. Uh, I don't really know if it'll matter much, but I figure if I could move air now it's just going to be a little tighter system but once again once you pressurize it you know what does it really matter i'm coming along with my housings uh and as you can see i'm going to be numbers two three and four this year which is which is fine at least they match uh and then i'm going to pull these out and 
we're just going to, and that water really kind of helps make sure that uh, these are not, you know, binding up at all. Um, we'll take our housing lid, you know, make sure that O-ring is how we want it to be. There's O-ring here, O-ring down in there. And we'll make sure that's pretty tight. So guys, once I get the RO membranes kind of wet, I get them into the housings themselves, start taking on a little weight. I can hear the water inside. I'm sure some water will spill out here, but I put those inside there. Uh, also, I make sure that my five micron filter, this is kind of a pre-filter, I get that put in, the O-rings in the right spot. This is all pretty much dry right now, but I have this assembled as well. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and put my housings into my little holder. Now I've got my numbers two, three, and four here, but I don't think it really matters as long as I know that uh, number two lid goes with number two body here. But all I need to do is slide those into there and you can see a little bit of water's popping out. That's okay. Or will also fit right into there. And so, uh, per the uh, picture in the corner, you can see that I have uh, these color coded a little bit. So, I know that my return sap will go into this line right there. And these are just kind of quick attach. I could just kind of slide those all in. So that is situ so the the sap line here is what I will eventually hook up to this this pressure uh, valve. So now I take my RO water, which this is my waste, right? And we are just kind of connecting that. Uh, now these do come with little clips. Uh, they're little blue clips that you could put in. Uh, I just never have because I disassemble this pretty regularly. Uh, but so that is where we're at for this stage of it. Now we want to put this body inside the barrel. So I'm always a little challenged by this uh, camera work, but you'll see that I have some markings going along the top. And, and those just show me where the actual screw holes are in the side of my barrel or my bucket here. And so, as I put this in, uh, I can kind of take a little bit of finagling, uh, but I will be able to line up the screw holes. So these last couple of steps are a little tricky. Uh, and so we got to remember what's going on here. Uh, this is your pump. This is sap that's coming in from your tank. Sap coming out, then it's going into this pre-filter, out of the pre-filter, and then it gets divided up three different ways. This is my line of my RO water here. And then this is my line for my sap going back into the tank. So what I want to do is I actually want to tuck underneath that white line down there. And so this is just to kind of make this all work. And so I'm going to bring that up. Now you can plumb this however you want. There we go. Got to make sure that gets in there. Then I can take that guy and I can swing this down and through. Then that hose can actually go down underneath the pump and go into that pre-filter. And I'm not too worried about that thing uh, 
it will do what it needs to do and it won't vibrate around too much. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I can take this and this, this gets a little tricky, but if you follow me, that will plumb into there, that will plumb into there, that will plumb into there, and then I actually circle this back around. And then that all lays flat. Well, golly gee, Joe, you don't seem to have a, uh, a gauge. I've got a gauge over here and I've used the gauge in the past, uh, but I know exactly what the pressure is. I change this pretty regularly. I can tell pressure uh, by what's how fast things are coming out. And, uh, and so I'm in good shape there. And this pump honestly won't make more pressure than I need. Um, so uh, what's the next step? Uh, the next step would be to hook up uh, a water inlet into it. Uh, or a sap inlet, and then to put my extension hoses onto these two pieces. And then this one will just take a line like that, and then I could pressurize it or depressurize it. Uh, okay, so now we're at that testing stage, and uh, you know, be honest with the eye. Haven't, have not tested this yet, so we're gonna see together if there's any leaks. Uh, this is just a quick attach that I can put to the bottom of that brass spigot that goes in the bottom of my barrels. And so that's kind of nice because I could just, uh, you know, unscrew it, move it to another barrel. But what I like is, is when I'm doing these tests or any clean out, I could just throw that right in the bottom and it's a nice uh, weighted piece. So that is going to go into my first pump. Uh, this line is something I just bought at uh, the Menards, which is uh, a big box store for us. And it's just quarter inch line. Um, and it's pretty thin. And if anything ever ices up, I can quickly see, uh, you know, where the ice is. And since it's fairly thin, it can melt very quickly. So that is our returning water. And then this is our pressurized sap end. We want to make sure that that is valve is opened up. We want to make sure that both of those water lines will shoot back in. A little bit of a mess here, uh, but we need to have some length so that, um, well, so that I can reach the barrels. So now we're gonna plug her in. So we see that water is coming out of this line, but not my sap return line, uh, because it won't go through there until I start adding pressure. So let's see if I can do this with one hand, right? Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's move this over this way. So as I add pressure, you'll hear the pump start to bear down a little bit. Now this is pure water. But you should see this line start to have less pressure, less pressure. And now the RO, the water is getting pushed through the RO membranes. It's building pressure in the pump. Wait for it. There we go, I see the water coming through the lines. And so the idea is that we will adjust this valve so that the two have about equal flow. And then this line right here, this is always my, my piece that has the most vibration because there's so much pressure going on there. That's the game. So right now, this here is 
water that I'm going to dispose, that water is getting pushed through the membranes. This is my returning sap that's concentrated. Uh, and then it just gets drawn back in. So we'll just kind of depressurize the system. Now it's full on. So hey guys, thanks for joining me during that process. Uh, so my my <laughs> my last little step that I always do is I will go back now and I will inspect inside that bucket. I'm looking for where the water's coming from. I'll possibly plug them back in, pressurize them back again. Looking for is any fitting loose, is any fitting leaking. Um, now I'm sure that it, it wouldn't be a huge deal but it, it, every little bit counts and, and small leaks become big leaks. Uh, so uh, if you hung out this long, I do appreciate it. And I appreciate you uh, spending so much time with me. Uh, the RO though, yeah, I'm lengthy. Yeah, I talk too much. But this RO, uh, whether you buy a unit or build a unit, uh, will save you so much time that it's, it's worth it in my opinion. Um, I do have links down below. Uh, if you choose to use the RO link, I, I do have a code there that you guys can use, save 10% on it. And uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, happy sugaring, right? Bye now.